What does build securely mean? Let's jump into the first stream of this security practice and discuss that. Good for this stream is as follows. Now, build processes are well documented. Somewhere, like a wiki page, there has been captured what is the build process and why is it there. Why are the steps performed in this sequence? What are the dependencies between steps? Especially necessary when you have a very complicated process to build the software. Another thing to make sure is that the builds are very repeatable. Imagine an organization building many software systems exactly the same way and running on a particular operating system version. This consistency would mean that the way things need to be packaged is the same across all projects. If packaging, framework, technology are all the same, everyone could use the same pipeline. Then if the security team needs to jump into a specific project for a specific knob, they know exactly what to expect. This also means that developers who internally switch between projects have a nearly zero learning curve. What you're also looking for is build execution to be as hands-off as possible. Ideally, as soon as the pull request is merged, the build just starts. Now, it is very important that the build process itself cannot be modified. You want to secure the build tools from modification. You shouldn't be really worried about unauthorized execution of the build. Furthermore, you want to fail your build pipeline if there are unapproved or known vulnerable dependencies in it. We will discuss this more when looking at software dependencies. Now, what you also want to have is automation for your security testing, and that should be part of your build pipeline. Now, what you might need to look there is that the tooling runs only nightly, depending on your tooling, of course, and how fast it runs. Weekly, monthly is also an option. However, not every single build has to run every single tool. And these tools should enforce security baselines. If there is a specific security baseline that needs to be met before something should ever per be permitted to proceed, then those should be enforced, like I said, in the build pipeline. Now, there is a lot of argument of whether or not you should fail the build. What you want as a minimum is for your quality metrics going into red if you have violated a mandatory security baseline. Then it may be a matter of policy that says you can or cannot promote this to the next environment. I would say that for the nightly hooks, you might not want to fail it, but I think your quick release build should fail it. The first maturity level asks whether the build process has been formally described. So there is sufficient information to recreate the build process and the documentation for that is accessible and up to date. You might also want to ensure that nobody can change it. Note that this could be a completely manual work. So you could have a 50 step manual that says you need to type this command, then you need to run the tests, then you need to run this tool. So it doesn't have to be automated for level one maturity. Additional quality criteria here are that you need to create artifact, artifact checksums during the build. These should be used in your deployment process to verify that your builds have not been tampered with. And of course, you need to harden the build tools. So you need to make sure that nobody can modify the build tools and, for instance, inject something malicious while in your build because checksums are not going to detect that. 
At the next level, we expect that the process is fully automated. So at level two, people shouldn't be doing hands-on keyboard clicks to run builds. We're using automation tools. Think of Jenkins, Azure DevOps pipelines, Bamboo. Builds are simply launched and at the end, they either succeed or fail. Note that one of the key criteria here is that there are no plain text secrets in your build pipeline itself. There is no opportunity for someone to type a password. It has to be added from somewhere else. It should be at least encrypted. When you have the ability to connect and push artifacts to a repo, the artifacts repo credentials shouldn't be plain text. They should not be stored, as I've mentioned, in the build tool as plain text. All these automation toolings and pipelines like Jenkins, uh, ADO, Bamboo, all of they, uh, they all provide the necessary mechanisms to make sure that these secrets are properly stored. You also make sure, similar to the level one, where things could be manual, but at level two, you need to make sure that your build tools are hardened and you're using, for instance, least privilege for the tool administrators. Your developers then cannot modify the build pipeline. A great example is, for instance, the GitLab pipeline configuration that by default resides in the code base as a YAML file. That is not a good idea. Rather, you would like to have a separate repo with more strict access control policies where these build artifacts are stored. And then giving developers read-only access to these artifacts is, of course, fine. At level three, we get to enforcing security checks. So build, builds should fail. And for instance, if you're running a SaaS tool, you might want to have a baseline that says no critical, no high, and maximum 25 moderate vulnerabilities. Any warnings and failures should be logged in a centralized system. So even if you decide to pass the build, the quality dashboards should go red. And then the tools you are using need to be reviewed. This one is typically easy to meet. Large organizations often review their, uh, the tools and the vendors at the end of their licensing year. 